Um, so what I want to ask you guys from the start is, is your website set up for success? So are you ready to drive heavy traffic to it? Are you ready to have people share from your website? Are you ready to see leads and sales come into the website? So we're going to talk about how to build your online presence from the ground up. And I'm going to show you a lot of the tools that I use and uh, we use in our agency to get people there. And this is me, and you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Six Peppers, if you are so inclined. So as a digital marketing agency, we have a lot of people come to us, uh, very familiar to this couple, where they ask for something like, uh, hey there, can you help us with Facebook advertising? Or can you post for us on Facebook and Twitter? Can you manage our social accounts? Can you blog for us? Can you write for us? Can you fix my website? That's, that's one that I love because I hate fixing websites. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's really it's a question that they're asking, but they're, they're just not ready for what they're asking for. So they think that it's going to happen where they just give me a couple hundred dollars and they get to run away with lead sales, money, profit. But it's really a little bit more complicated than that. And so you kind of have to ask yourself, do you want to take the red pill and take their money and give them exactly what they asked for, knowing full well that they're probably going to fail? Or do you take the blue pill and show them what they need to do to help them really succeed? And so we're going to take the blue pill today. It's a battle between the good ninja and the bad ninja inside you. And we're all here to be digital marketing ninjas. And this is going to be us as we go through our journey. So I'm going to show you guys a product. This is called our WebPress setup. Uh, we kind of productize our service for setting up all of these companies for uh, success because we notice common problems among all sorts of industries and you know, them kind of jumping the gun on what they needed. So this is, we sell this you know, from 750 up, depending on what people want uh, or need. And it, it, I'm going to sh go through the steps of how we set somebody up uh, from start to finish. So let's go. First pillar that I want to talk about is social activation. Uh, probably all of you guys, have, if you guys have all started companies, it sounds like, or are part of a big company or, or here to learn a little bit more about that side of it. So uh, you probably have a Facebook page for the business, Twitter, uh, Google Plus, all, all of those channels. But we, we really want to make sure that we kind of optimize these the right way to guarantee the maximum amount of kind of traffic flow back to the website, because the website's what we control. And that's where we're going to drive the rest of our business, right? Leads, sales, uh, repeat customers, all and collecting emails. So we need to get kind of an Excel document or a Word document together with all this information. It's your name. You need custom headers for all of your social channels. They all need to relay the same message. Uh, whatever your kind of call to action is on social to get people thinking about your company, whether it's brand awareness. Uh, you, can, you can just tell them to come back to your website right now. On our uh, website, where we are pushing a white paper right now. So all of our social uh, banners reflect that. You get your logo. You want to optimize your description, and we'll get into that in a second. Uh, all the rest of this stuff, topics are very important, what categories you, uh, your company is in. You know, if you're, you're an attorney, it's you're, you're an attorney. Are you uh, a consultant as well? What exact space are you in? So you have a uh, broad space that you can target a few different options. And then you have a niche role that defines exactly who you are. And so targeting the broad terms gets you uh, access to a lot of people, but the narrow one gets people to know exactly what you're doing. So. Uh, finding the right categories and balancing them out. And putting this all together in a document with a handful of images that are ready to go because you're going to use this document over and over again across all of your social channels and then across local listings. We're not going to cover that today, but I'll, I'll talk about a little bit at the end. So here are some tools that we use to help optimize our social accounts as we're getting started. First thing we do is we use Bitly. It's bitly.com or bit.ly. And this is just really simple for social tracking. So what you're going to do is you can sign up for a free account on Bitly, and you can type in the URL of uh, mysite.com. And so whatever your, your company site is, type that in there, and it'll create a custom URL. You can actually add, you can say bit.ly dash you know, mysite, or whatever you want to do. You can customize that URL. And then you can put that on Twitter and Facebook, 
and Google Plus, you can even create a different one for all three if you're feeling ambitious. And then that tracks how many people are clicking through from your Twitter account. And there's a way to do this in Google Analytics if you're a real nerd like me. So, uh, but it's just, this is just easier. It seems to be the way that uh, business owners want to see how many people are clicking through on Twitter. And for us, it's actually easier to report on. We can just say, you know, 50 people clicked on your link right here, uh, rather than going and diving into Google Analytics and, and getting all that information. So we use Bitly to uh, kind of do a little bit of really simple uh, link tracking, click tracking when it's a, it can be an article, it can be your website name, it can be uh, any kind of link on your site, generally on your site that you, that you want to track uh, clicks through. Then we use Google. There's three parts to Google that uh, we use. You can start with the auto form fill, which we're all familiar with. Go to google.com, type in your space, type in whatever it is that you do, and see what the next word is, and see if, you, if that it relates to your space. And you can kind of pull up different ideas of topics and categories using Google auto form fill. Then you can also go to Google Trends and see which ones, which terms of those are going up in trend or down in trend, and also you can see which ones are more important and more relevant over the others. So through, through using that process, you're looking at terms in kind of your description or in your topics and categories that you're going to be kind of creating this Word document around or this Excel document around, and you're going to find the right way to say your message. So instead of just saying the description of your business, you're going to find a way to say it that reaches the maximum audience. Because when you put this on a social channel, people will search a term and then they'll find your site a little bit easier if you do this right. So, so the third one is uh, Google Keyword Planner. If you have an AdWords account, it doesn't sound like a lot of people kind of have one, but you can, you can dive into Google AdWords. You can go to Google Keyword Planner, type in something like, uh, like uh, home remodeling, and you can see what kind of bucket or what kind of t whole category home remodeling has. So like in San Diego, you can see home remodeling and then different locations. If you wanted to get uh, very granular with it, you could see kitchen remodeling, bathroom remodeling. You could make the comparison. Well, I do outdoor remodels, or and I also do windows, but there's only I can only put three categories in on Facebook as far as my categories. Which one has the most traffic? So you can see which term people are searching for most often. And this is how we set up our social channels so that we're maximizing the success from here on out. Because generally, we're not going to change these things very often, right? So. So the next one is right tag, which is very uh, similar to all those, except it's, it specifically has to do with hashtags. It's a cool little plugin. You get 30 days free with right tag, and then they want to charge you thereafter. But uh, but if you've never used it before, if you want to open another account uh, under a different email, you can you can go into Twitter, and if you've installed the Chrome extension, you can type in hashtag, and then for like my industry, it's like hashtag social media is very green. People are always tagging that, they're also always searching it, and it's very, very popular. But when I type in, ironically, uh, hashtag online presence is a lot less search. I think it's either red or yellow for our zone, so the name of our company has online presence management in it, and it's not even technically an optimized name. But uh, but the the idea is that when you're creating like your Twitter bio, you've got your message, so you, you, you're telling people exactly what you do, and then you've, you're throwing a few hashtags in there that you know are very green on search. They're, they're getting thousands of searches uh, a month, and people might find you through searching that. And then, of course, you get to reuse those hashtags in your tweets uh, in order to kind of increase social awareness and, and stuff like that. The last one is Qualifier, which we use for call analytics. There are other options. I think you could even use Google Voice for free. Um, if Google Voice isn't going to track it, though. So Qualifier can track incoming calls. It actually records the, the, met, the whole phone call. So from our standpoint, uh, when someone calls like a client of ours that we've set this up for, we can listen to the call and determine whether it was a lead that came in, and we, we can listen and qualify them, and then say, this is how many leads we got you via your website, because we're only putting the qualifier phone number, so it's a different number, it's a forwarding number. We're only putting that on their website, so it, the only way they could ever find that number is there, and since we're the ones generally for our, our clients dragging the traffic to the website, we can kind of take credit for them calling that number and that being a lead that we produce so that we can prove our results to our clients. So that, that's just great for call tracking. Another nice benefit of it, especially for me, I use my personal phone as my business phone. You can add this little whisper message at the beginning so it says call from Splash for me. So I know to answer business and not personal. You know how that would get. <laughs> so after we've got this optimized uh, description and all that information set up, we need to choose what channels we're going to kind of focus our energy on. 
there, it's always different by industry. So the big three that pretty much everyone should always be on are Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Facebook's really obvious. Uh, everyone's on Facebook. There's almost no reason not to be there. Twitter, we already talked about how to optimize the description and stuff. And, and Google+, is very important that you verify your Google Plus account. Uh, this is like the number one mistake that I see people making that are, that are kind of new small business owners, especially local. So you have a site verification and a local verification. And a cool little trick you can do, even if you're an online site, is you can verify your, you can, you can create an account with your location address, verify it as a local business, and then you can merge that with your online site. Mike, I think, I think this might be something that can help you. So what that does is it, it increases your local awareness when people are searching around your topic. You might actually jump up locally on the search results. So it's a little bit of a benefit there, and there's not much of a downside to it. Uh, it's, it's just a, a kind of a little trick to being local verified as well as site verified. For I'm not going to get into the details of all that stuff, but that's uh, very important. So those are the big three. We want to do those for, we do those for every client. On the uh, secondary channels, you've got uh, these are the four big ones. They're all a little bit different. Pinterest is obviously, uh, it, you, that links back to the site in a lot of different ways. If you're very visual, it's a great site to be on. Uh, so one of the things that I read recently is that if you verify your Google Plus account, that your image will pop up when you email somebody. And that's really important. So like when you open your Gmail account, and someone has a verified Google Plus account, like you'll see their image on the right-hand side. And if they don't have an image there, then it's less personal. So, you know, if you see the person, you're like, okay, like, it gives you a warmer feeling. Is that on, that's for the business itself? Uh, no, for, like, just uh, personal accounts. Yeah, I, so I, I use, like, a plugin that uh, allows me to connect on Google+. Plus. So every, when I open Gmail every time, it actually searches, like, LinkedIn, Google+, Plus, and Twitter. And so it, when I when you send me an email, I was able I can just hit the plus button on all those. So it's like a really that's another hack that we'll we'll get in. I don't even know the name of this plugin, but uh, yeah. So for personal uh, personal verification is a little bit different, but uh, yeah, always verifying Google Plus. So we're not using Google Plus as our social media tool. Uh, most of us aren't. There are big businesses, enterprise level businesses, can use that uh, to drive serious traffic. But I think for, for most people, I would say don't focus on Google+. Plus. There's a lot of whispers about them going under or changing completely to Google My Business or Google Places or something like that. But, uh, but you verify yourself because it's Google, and that's a Google property. So when you're verified there, everything about your business is going to rank better. And, you're, and that also comes, you come up on Google Maps searches. So it, I mean, right, yeah, getting verified on Google is like the number one priority for any, any startup or small business, especially local business. And yeah, the secondary channels I don't want to talk about too much, but they're definitely there to, uh, to do. So this is our site. I think that I kind of already talked about it, but we have our call to action at the top and the banner that we created uh, and our logo here in the bottom. Ironically, we're not actually optimized. Uh, this should not say this here at the bottom. We have to, we have to sort our um, thing out. So I'm not drinking my own Kool-Aid quite yet, but I have brought it to our company's attention. We're, we're going to fix it. Uh, in the description here, we have a one-line uh, intro about exactly what we do. It's oriented towards the customer, not towards uh, ourselves or the industry. Then we have a few hashtags that are all green. And then we have another call to action. Check out our blog and a bit of a link to our blog. Uh, 